So today we are going to be graphing parabolas. Now in order to graph a parabola, we need the equation in vertex form. And I've done videos on how to graph equations in vertex form, all right? Because there's some key numbers in here that tell you what the graph is going to look like. For example, the number inside the parentheses is the horizontal shift. The number added at the end is the vertical shift. And if we have a number multiplied on the outside of the parentheses that's being squared, that's your vertical stretch, okay? Now, the thing about today's equations is none of them are going to be in this form. They're all going to be in what we call standard form, which is the equation without parentheses simplified, just expanded out, okay? So the key to these equations is finding a way to get this equation into this format. And for that, we are going to use a technique called completing the square. And here's how it works, all right? First off, we need the, the part of the equation to look like this, x minus something squared, or x plus something squared, all right? So we need a perfect square here. So what we're going to do is take a look at this first part of the equation, and imagine parentheses around this, x squared plus 12x, all right? We're going to try and turn this stuff in parentheses into a perfect square. Now, to make it into a perfect square, we are going to do a little formula. And the formula is this. We take the number next to x, which is 12. And then the formula is divide that number by 2 and square it. OK? 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 squared is 36. So what that tells us is if we add 36 inside of this parentheses, this little expression here, x squared plus 12x plus 36, will become a perfect square, all right? Which is what we want. We want to get a perfect square out of this, okay? But here's the problem. You can't just add 36 to an equation because then it'll be unbalanced, right? If you add 36 to this side, you have to add 36 to the other side to keep things balanced. But we don't want to add anything to this side because we want it to be y equals. So instead of adding 36 to both sides of the equation, what we're going to do is, if we add 36 to the right side to keep it balanced, I'm also going to subtract 36 to this side of the equation, OK? And by doing that, by adding 36 and subtracting 36 on the same side of the equation, um, we're basically adding nothing, adding 0. Okay, so let's simplify this down a little bit, okay? I'm going to keep this plus 36 inside the parentheses, just so it can stay with the rest of what I want to be a perfect square. And on the outside, I have a positive 29 minus 36. And 29 minus 36 is negative 7. Okay, so, so far, so good. I've made it a little bit more complicated, but we know that this equation is still equal because all we did was we added and subtracted 36 on the same side. Now, here's the key. All this stuff in parentheses is a perfect square. And we know that because we specifically put in 36 because it would be a perfect square. And the way we find this perfect square is we have to either take the number next to x and divide it by 2, which is 6, or we can square root this number on the end, which is also 6. And that will tell us inside the parentheses would be x plus 6. So x plus 6 squared is equal to this. And if you're not sure that, or you don't believe that this is actually the case, you can multiply this out and find out. x plus 6 squared, it actually comes out to this. OK? And I'm going to tack on the minus 7 at the end. And look what we have now. We actually have our equation in vertex form now. All right, and now we can actually graph this, okay? So on this graph here, I have the graph of y equals x squared. So y equals x plus 6 squared minus 7 would be shifted to the left 6 and down 7. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do the vertex here. Here's the vertex here. I'm going to go 6 left and down 7. There's my new vertex down there. And if I just duplicate the rest of this parabola, 3, 5, now I'll have the graph of 
that equation. Boom, there it is. All right, but the key to this is trying to get it into this form by using this, this technique called completing the square. We'll do one more so you can get the hang of it. All right, I'm gonna shift it up. Here we go. y equals x squared minus 8x plus 21. All right, first step, I'm putting parentheses around the x squared and the minus 8x terms. All right, now we need to complete the square. To complete the square, we take the number next to x, negative 8, and divide it by 2 and square it. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. So what that tells us is we need to add 16 in here so that this is going to be a perfect square. But again, we can't just add a number to si one side of the equal sign to keep it balanced. I'm going to subtract 16 from the same side so that the net difference is 0. All right? So let's simplify what we have here. y equals, I'm going to keep the 16 in the parentheses with the rest of this stuff so it's a perfect square. And then on the outside, we've got 21 minus 16. And 21 minus 16 is 5, so I'm just going to simplify this to plus 5. All right. Now, let's write this as the perfect square. All right. We know we're going to have an x there. Now, for the other term, what we're going to do is either divide this by 2 or square root this. Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. The square root of 16 is 4. Or, if you really think about it, the square root of 16 could also be negative 4. So since this divided by 2 is negative 4, we're going to use the negative version of the square root. It's got to be minus 4. So this perfect square would be x minus 4 squared. And then I'll drop down my five, plus 5. And look what we have. We are done. We can graph this now. OK? So let's check it out. This says my vertex is going to shift to the right four units and then move up five. So here's my vertex, right four, up five. Here's my new vertex. And now I just have to copy the rest of the pattern. So this is up one, this is up three, and then five's not going to fit. So it's going to look something like this. All right. So hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please hit the like button. Also subscribe because it really helps us out. But with that being said, good luck on your math and I will see you next time.